Hi, and welcome to the third part of Lab 8 of CS50, which is called Trivia. In today's video, I'm going to finish the problem by giving the user the opportunity to only answer a question once. Because last time, we did cover the basic requirements. However, if we try to answer more than once, we see that we can do that, uh, but in real quizzes, we usually can't. So that's what we're going to work on today, um, as well as the free response part, because if I now say no, submit, and then change my answer to yes, it's going to be considered the correct answer, but I don't want to be able to, to change it and submit multiple times. So we're now in the ID, and let's see what's going to be the most intuitive approach here. So the first thing that pops into my mind is to create a boolean variable, which is going to be something like um, is clicked or is answered, we'll decide that a bit later. And based on if the question has been answered or not, we want to consider the new um, registered click or, um, or submit or not. So let's first create two variables. The, one's going, the first one is going to be for the multiple choice question and the second one for the free response question because we want to be able to answer both but not to be able to give more than one answer to each one. So um, I'm in the main function that I've used and below the two variables that I've declared I'm going to add a third one. So I'm going to call it let's... Um, let's multiple answered so this comes from multiple choice question answered but i'm just going to write it this way because otherwise it's very long so let multiple answered equal um it's going to equal false in the beginning because if we are opening the app for the first time obviously we haven't answered the question yet and i'm going to do the same for the free response question i'm just going to write free um Maybe maybe is answered is going to be better. Yes, yeah, so let's call them this way. Um, now I'm not going to write free response again, but free is enough for us to understand. So multiple is answered and free is answered. They both equal false in the beginning. And now, when we click on a button to to choose an answer for the first question, the first thing we want to do. And we want to check if it has already been answered. And if it has been answered, we don't want to keep the function going. We want to stop the execution because we've already given an answer and we don't have the right to change it. So we can say if um, multiple, multiple is answered equals true. So if it has been answered, I just want to return. Now, what does return do? It's just going to, to stop the execution of the function. It's not going to return anything in particular, uh, but that's what we want. If I have already answered the question, I end the function here and I don't execute the code afterwards. Um, and the other thing we want to do is because now with this version of the code, multiple answered is always going to be uh, false because we never set the value to true. So the other thing we want to do is if this is the first time we are selecting an answer. So I'm refreshing and that's the first time I'm selecting an answer. When I click on that, um, I want to, I'm, I'm going to skip this because multiple is answered this false because I haven't answered it yet. I want to execute all this code and in the end, I want you to now modify the value of this boolean that I created. So um, multiple, uh, sorry, not multiple choice, multiple is answered equals true. So again, if this is the first time we're choosing an answer, we're going to execute this code and we're going to set multiple is answered to true because I've already selected what I believe is correct. And the second time I try that, I'm going to say, is it true? Well, it is. So I'm just going to return and stop the execution of the function. Now, let's go and try it, but I can tell you that this is not going to work. I know that it's not going to work, but I just want to, to show you what the problem is because a lot of students encounter such an issue and I want to explain how to solve it. So let me come here, refresh. Now, 
click here. Oops, I I cannot select any answer. Let's check the the console. So I'm, I hit F12. We have multiple is answered is not defined. Line 26. So let's go to 26. Okay, that's where we use it. But now most students ask why is it not defined? I declared it here. Well, the reason is that. We have declared it here within this listen function, which means that it's only going to be available, it's only going to be accessible within this function. And we cannot access it from a function that is outside of that one. So what we can do to solve the problem is we can just cut both of the functions um, and just paste them inside of the listen one. because. Now, uh, if you come back to the top, these two variables are accessible for the entire listen function and these two, I mean, multiple choice and free response are nested into listen. So it's, they're part of it and therefore they still have access to its variables. So now if I save, go back, um, we, we don't see any, any errors in our console and now I can just um, select Gregor Mendel. This works. Now let's try selecting a new answer. Okay, I cannot because now I'm coming here and I'm saying, is it true? I have already selected the answer, so I just wanted to skip everything that's afterwards. Um, and of course, if we try with the wrong answer and then try to correct it, we cannot do that. We're not allowed to. So this works. And the way we're going to approach the free response question is pretty much the same. So I can even copy that part with the if statement. So let me go here. That's the free response question. So in the beginning, first check if I have already answered it. So free is answered. If I have already answered it, there is no point in taking the free response input elements, the value, creating new elements, etc. I just wanted to return and do nothing. Um, and in case I haven't answered, I want to say um, free is answered equals true. Okay, perfect. Let's just save. Go here, refresh, make sure that we haven't ruined this one. And now try to say no. So that's wrong answer, sorry, that's incorrect. And then try to change it to yes and submit. Okay, we cannot do that, right? Because now we have already selected an answer. Therefore, we only execute this part of the function. And if I write yes, and then try to change it to no, even though that doesn't make sense. I have already given a correct answer, but let's just try that. Okay, so again, we cannot change our answer to a new one. So this was a very short tutorial, but a lot of students asked me how to do it. So I decided to, I know, just film part three of this, um, of this problem. This was the final part. So you now have an entire solution you can submit to Harvard CS50. I hope the video was helpful and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.